Hello, oh, well, good afternoon. Friday afternoon with Cole again. And apologies, it has indeed been a while. It's been a long while between drinks, and that's, uh, I guess, down to me due to you know sort of other commitments and whatnot. Um, I am back though, and today I want to talk about one thing and one thing only, and it's this. This is a brand new album on Vicious Kitten Records. Came out 1st of March. It's by the Hitman DTK and it's called Tonight We Ride. Live in Sydney, 13th of November 1991 with special guest Dennis Tech. I'm going to talk a little bit about this project and how this has come to fruition. A little bit of history though before we start about this project. A little bit of housekeeping though as well. It's been a while, I've kind of forgotten a little bit of the drill. Um, been a few gigs that uh, I have seen recently, uh, and I suppose the most couple ones of note were The Damned uh, last week in Sydney. The Damned were, as you'd expect, amazing, as were the Hard-Ons, who had the support. Also caught up with uh, Cheap Trick, uh, who are currently touring, touring Australia on a very long uh, six-week kind of tour throughout Australia as part of the Red Hot Summer Festival. but. Managed to catch one of their side shows and they were on their game. Uh, and last time I saw them, maybe three or four years ago, it was a little bit hit and miss. I mean, they, uh, you know, had Robin Sun in the band. I, I don't mind, uh, you know, when that sort of happens. Some bands, though, you start getting Sons in the band, you know, it starts bordering on sort of franchise territory down the track. Certainly not with uh, with Cheap Trick. Uh but last time I saw them, they were just on, and Dax was great. Just the four guys, no backup tapes, as you get. No major production, four guys on the stage, and you know, choosing from them that immense set list. I mean, what a, what a task, but you know, introducing stuff like Downed, which they hadn't played in, in some time, so that was really, really good. The other thing is uh, I want to talk about is uh, for another episode is uh, the reissue of the new toys say it EP on CD uh, on 13th Street records so I'll talk about that in a in a future episode that's also available but as I said today's episode is primarily going to focus on this which is the brand new album uh, on vicious kitten records so this project actually started as an idea and it started from here which is a cassette, right? So from maybe 1985, 84, from let's say early 85 onwards till around 90, 92, about seven year period, seven, eight year period, um, I would take my tape recorder and record bands, you know, when I, particularly in pubs. Uh, not so much to trade or to it was certainly not to sell, but as a music fan, I always wanted more than just you know the recording. Uh, sorry, more than just the the gig. Uh, you know, I you know want the set list or I want the poster on the wall or you know just a souvenir. I suppose there's a lot of people who are you know serious music fans like that as well, and so quite often I would take my tape recorder which was nothing special. It was just a Tandy, I forget the model number now. I'll try and fish out a photo for it. It was just a Tandy, so what's that, realistic brand, handheld tape recorder. Uh, I did used to clean the heads though to make sure the heads were, were, were pretty clean. Um, but I would record all sorts of bands and I must have recorded um, maybe 400 bands with that, with that recorder. Some were better than others uh, in, in terms of uh, quality of recording. Profile bands, uh, not so profile bands. I record a lot of bands in big, big stadiums, like the Sydney Entertainment Centre, particularly, uh, but mainly in pubs and clubs. Anyone and everyone. You talk big bands. I remember recording uh, Foreigner on one of their tours. Uh, who else? <clears throat> First Guns N' Roses show in 1988. I remember recording that, and that came out with a really good sound. Um, but of course, massive fan of bands like the Hitmen, Screaming Tribesmen, uh, Psychotic Turnbuckles, 
hard-ons, mass appeal, uh, lime spiders, dyed pretty, all that kind of ilk. So all those bands were recorded on tape. So I fished out some. So this was um, uh, one from the Screaming Tribesman that I had from the General Burke Hotel on that Bloodlust tour. Uh, when is that? 1991, right? So, I mean, this is the thing. I mean, nowadays you go to a, uh, to a show, everyone's got a, you know, a, a, a video recorder and a camera and, and, and whatnot, audio recorder as well, in their pocket on their phone, right? In those days, you didn't, if you wanted to take photos of the band, well, you know, you had to have your camera. If you wanted to record something, well, you took a risk because no one recorded shows. Very few people did. And, you know, you used to make, well, I used to make, you know, you take the cassette and you'd write on it what it was. You know, you'd get a photo out of the newspaper and you would make up a cover, right? And suddenly you had your own one-off recording. Um, so a lot of bands. These are just a handful that I, I still have. Screaming Tribesman, Girl Monster from Melbourne. That was their very first show in Sydney, 1989. Uh, Candy Hearts, very early show, late 87. A bunch of bootlegs here from the Hitmen. Uh, this one was from St. Peter's uh, Heaven Club, 1989. St. Peter's Hotel. Um, All sorts of stuff. Yeah, so there were a lot of Hitman shows around that period that I saw and also recorded. And they were exciting times because <clears throat> that Hitman uh, EP that they came back with, which was UELA, Utopian Emotional Love Aura, which came out on Survival Records, was just fantastic. Um, and so, yeah, so I recorded bunch of those shows on uh, on cassette but then what happened and let me get to the story let's circle back come back to how we ended up with this from this all right is the release album release show for the moronic inferno album uh was coming up and dennis tech who had played on the moronic inferno album was brought out as special guest for those release shows for the album in late 1991. So, you know, as I normally did, I mean, this was uh, an exciting thing if you were a fan of Radio Birdman and you had followed all those bands, those Detroit type of bands, whoever you want to name, um, throughout the mid to, late, mid to late 1980s. So the other thing is there was always a mythology about Radio Birdman. So each time if you saw uh, Chris Mazowak or you saw Johnny Canis or you saw the New Christs or you saw whoever had a connection with Radio Birdman, there was always that mythology. Uh, and that remained in place until the 1996 uh, reunion. Uh, but that mythology that existed within the band was... Uh, was was part of the charm of uh, a lot of those other bands. And then with Tech coming back and playing these shows in 1991 with the Hitmen, um, it was really exciting because he hadn't played in Australia or had, hadn't been on an Australian stage since 1981 with New Race. Um, so... As I normally did, I went along to these shows. Now, these one, I think this was a Wednesday night. They did four shows on this. I think it was four shows. Let's think back. Okay, so it was the Wednesday night, which was the 13th of November, 1991. That's the cassette. As you can see, 13th of November, 1991, Toucan Tango at Newtown. And then I think there was no show the next night. The Friday night was at Moby's... Uh, I think which was Whale Beach Surf Club, Sydney's far northern beaches. <laughs> and then two nights at the Annandale Hotel. Right, so I saw all those shows and I recorded one night at the Annandale Hotel on cassette. I think the first night. And I did not record Moby's. Do not recall. Did not record that one. Um, but 
So let's get to the point. So like a lot of these sort of cassettes and things, they end up in boxes, they end up in storage. I had, you know, listened to some of them, but you know, you end up with things in different places. And then I ended up fishing this one out and then listening to it again. Only, you know, a couple of years ago. And I thought, man, that sound is really, really good. Whether I was positioned near the sound desk, I can't recall. But the balance of all the instruments and the clarity of the sound was really, really good. So having relaunched the record label with uh, my brother, and we relaunched that with the Kevin K and Ricky Rat 7-inch from two or three years ago, um, I had the idea with my brother of, hey, why don't we try and put this out, right? So after a lot of uh, logistics and getting the sound uh, recordings mastered um, in Melbourne by Ernie O and working on the great uh, artwork that you've seen on this record by Mark Rubenstein in New York City. Um, we ended up with this finished product. So what we're going to do is I'll read through the liner notes as well for those who haven't picked it up and uh, we'll also cut to two or three songs to give you a bit of an idea. So these liner notes are also from my own head. So if I'm reading and verbatim, that verbatim, that's okay because they're my sort of words anyway. So let's do some stage setting, some scene setting. Enter the time machine, set the date and location. 13 November 1991, the Toucan Tango, a small club in Newtown in Sydney's inner west. The crowd are sardined in, the air thick with anticipation. This would be the first time in a decade Radio Birdman's Dennis Tech had set foot on an Australian stage, having last trod the boards alongside Ron Ashton and Dennis Thompson in New Race. That he would be, well, he would be appearing alongside Chris Mazowak, his guitar partner in Birdman, only added to the anticipation. So, from memory, it was jam-packed. I think it was upstairs from memory as well, but it was sardined in. Significance of the occasion is not lost on the band either. Adrenaline pumping hard, Hitman DTK roar into action with Justice Blind and other crunching hard rock numbers from the UELA EP. So, why don't we just cut and we'll listen to about, uh, say, 30, 40 seconds of Justice Blind from this recording. Let's go to that now. Inferno album and the set list from this night contains many songs from this underappreciated album including Too Many Girls which I wrote as the best song the dictators never wrote Andy Chernoff Eat Your Heart Out The Muscular Heart Full of Hate and the stunning St Valentine's Day St Valentine's Day is, is a ter terrific song as is Heart Full of Hate let's cut to around 30 seconds of Heart Full of Hate <laughs>
Chris Mazowak's rendition of The Ventures Walk Don't Rain, which is actually the Pink Fairies version, uh, signals the arrival of Dennis Tech to the stage. His entrance emitting a wave of electricity through the room. Now, you could audibly notice when he came to the stage because the pitch of the audience rose, the volume of the audience rose significantly. They launched into Hand of Law uh, and it really did send the crowd off into frenzy. So let's cut to about 30 seconds of Hand of Law. <laughs> Sisto, who was uh, in The Visitors and was a former backup singer of Birdman, uh, Preaching to the Converted, if you already know that sort of stuff. He got up and did uh, uh, helped out on backup vocals on Did the Pop. Uh, at the Annandale Hotel, two or three nights later, um, Pip Hoyle got up and did guest keyboard on Man with the Golden Helmet. I also have all that on recording as well. So... All in all, you know, listening back to it, I thought, wow, this is really, really amazing. This, the sound and the recording is amazing. But as I continued here, and I'm quoting again, that you are even listening to this album is nothing short of amazing because the original recording was made on this cassette. The cassette sat in a box for more than 30, three decades. We discovered the cassette, played again, and thought, wow, lightning in a bottle. So, yeah. And importantly, I suppose, historically for me, as a uh, historian of, of, of music, the recording documents uh, hit men during that second incarnation, which was 89 to 91. Um, yeah, so, you know, as you can see, the production came out really well in terms of the artwork. Mark Rubenstein, um, and I've got his website there. If you need artwork, right, he is amazing and he knows exactly what to do. He really came out with um, a theme that suited the, the, the music and he understood what we were after. And yeah, the whole product and presentation came out really, really well. A live photos there. Photos there that were taken uh, largely by my brother, most of those, except the photo on the front. And you can see there, there's an old gig ad on the back there, courtesy of Dylan Webster. So yeah, so what you have, uh, 18 songs all up on this album, which is the entire set. Nothing was omitted. Um, it's a complete set on the night. So as I said, if you're a fan of um, great hard rock, Australian punk, stuff like The Dictators, all that Radio Birdman Detroit school of rock and roll, you're going to love this. For those who haven't picked it up already. For those who have picked it up, I'd like to say thank you and we appreciate your support. And yeah, so that's about it. I just wanted to talk a little bit about this and a little bit of the history behind it, how it um, sort of came to fruition. And yeah, check out the uh, Bandcamp page. It's where you can pick it up. It is also available now for sale worldwide by MVD Distribution in no matter what country you are. MVD, I'll put some links up as well. You can 
get it through Amazon, you can get it through, uh, you can get it in Japan, all sorts of places now. So please check out the links and search for it. It's, uh, it is a limited number. So once it's gone, it is only available in CD, CD format. There is no digital. Um, see how it goes. There has been talk about putting it out on vinyl one step at a time. Hey? All right, but thanks, um, thanks for watching. Let's cut to one more song, okay? Let's cut to the full version, or maybe about a couple of minutes of Aloha Stephen Dano. My name's Cowboy Cole. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you in the next episode. Aloha! Yes, Steve.